here we go. We're going to do a panoramic image in Lightroom for this episode, plus a whole bunch of masking and other editing. So I want to start with sort of also backing up and talking about quality of light in a landscape image. And um, this was uh, this image that we're working on was shot uh, out in Jackson, Wyoming, uh, back in August 2023, with a group of veterans uh, learning photography. And heh, we had an interesting, such a beautiful location, but we had an interesting morning. Great the fucking day, bud. Somebody is just gonna get fucking jolt cola. Started out pretty cloudy. But then we had clouds behind us to the east, and we're, we're looking fairly west-northwest. And so as, as the sunrise went on and got up over the range behind us, uh, light started to filter down onto the mountaintops, just, to, just later than you would typically expect it. So I kept waiting, and I had a sense that, and this is what it started to look like, and you can see, see a little, little tickle of light up there on uh, the peak. And it kept building down. And so finally the lights started filtering in. Honestly, I was hoping to catch some of it down in front of me uh, and, and on the trees and the brush in the foreground. But I finally, some light made it down in there. And you can see just a tickle of light hitting and raking across right to left across the treetops. At this point, I was just going to be happy. Yeah, then it spilled into that foreground, and it was and and Jackson Grand Teton Peak cleared. Yet I still had the lenticular cloud, and and so this ended up being the moment um, I edited. Just pump the brakes right there. I got a question. I was on a tripod, and uh, I had my tripod level. Camera was level, tripod was level, so my frames were fairly level as I rotated through the panoramic. And uh, so just make a note of that. If you can get it level, great. If you have to rotate through and sort of eyeball it and adjust as you go, fine. The software is really good today and will help sort that out. So what we're looking at here is a raw image, how I exposed it. And, and many of you are probably saying, but boy, that shadow detail. I mean, geez, it's black, and it is black. And you can see it up here, upper right in the histogram, or very, very close to black. But I wanted to hold detail in the highlights of the sky and in uh, the light raking across the foreground. So I also know that this particular camera retains enormous detail in the shadow, so I don't fear it too much. And so I, I had that frame... And this frame, as I worked back across the scene, to there, and to there. So I knew I had some light up on the peak. I knew the peak was open. I knew uh, the lenticular cloud. Oh, look at that. More sensor boogers. Shocking. Hey, fella. Don't worry. We'll just pretend we didn't see you for now. All right. So those are the images we're going to build into a panoramic. So we're going to just do that right now. And I'm going to do that by selecting all of these. And there's a couple ways to get there, but I'm just going to right click for a menu in Lightroom. So I just right, did a right click on my mouse and I come up to photo merge panorama. All right, fine. Let's click it. See what happens. There we go. We're clicking. We're merging. It's thinking. It's working. It's bleep blooping. Process. Oh, there. Hey, look at that. We've got a preview. Um, you have three different sort of models, mathematical models for stitching and presenting a projection. They're spherical. I'll click on cylindrical and it'll adjust. And um, Okay, really not too much different. Got a little slightly taller. Let's see what perspective does. Yep, different model. Now, don't panic about all this white space you see around the image. We should never panic, not when we're taking pictures. Hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think, I haven't tried this, I think I'm going to try perspective on this image. 
And then I'm going to come here to boundary warp. And I'm not going to do anything but go 100%. Let's see what that does. Ooh, looky there. Filled her right in, stretched her out, took care of everything. And then I have two other settings here. Don't worry about create stack. I have two other settings here, uh, auto crop, auto settings. You can play with those. I usually start with auto settings, which is Lightroom's way of just going auto awesome on your image. And we're going to merge those together. what Taylor Swift is doing today. She usually has called me by now. Usually by like 9.30 in the morning. All right, we're back. Got it. Here's the image we just stitched together. How do I know? Because it has all the sensor boogers in it. <laughs> Fine. Fine, let's just get them out of there. Uh, zick, oh, there's one. Uh, drive, they drive me nuts. I can't stand looking at them, so I'm just going to grab our little booger healing finger picking booger remover, uh, and we're going to do it on uh, my favorite setting, the um, content to wear remove. So remove, make it happen. Excellent. All right, so, geez, pretty darn good as is. Um, not sure where I want to go with this yet. I think I want to crop it first, so that's what we're going to do. Um, let's talk about why. So over here on the far right of the frame, we have this really bright uh, grasses catching light in the lower right corner. Fine, it's sort of obnoxious to me. I could clone it out, but I also have sort of this far right range of the image that mm, isn't really offering anything to me. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go, oh, here we go. I'm going to crop that. And I have choice to see this little padlock here. You can click on it and lock the proportion. <laughs> Holds your proportion. Got it. Or we can do sort of a whatever we want by unlocking that and we have a whole bunch of presets in here. Okay, fine. I'm just wanting to crop in from the right. So let's go ahead and do that somewhere probably like that. I don't know. Yeah, good enough. Let's keep her moving. Excellent. All right. What do I want to do next? What I want to do next is probably... I'm going to add a little contrast right out of the gate. I don't like what auto did for contrast. So plus six, plus eight, nine, a little more. Plus 10. And then maybe we should just work on the haze a little bit in the sky and mountains. So I'm going to do that with a mask by coming up here and clicking on this far right icon, circular icon dealy. And I'm going to do this very sloppy with a brush. So I'm going to grab my brush tool. Auto mask unchecked. I don't need to auto mask right now. Just unchecked. I would definitely want to see overlay which is red so it's just showing me where I'm painting. I'm going to give myself a little bigger thingy here. Paintbrush. And I'm going to come through and go <laughs> paint, 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 paint. Yep, yep, there we go. Sure, fine. So I'm just going to dehaze. Don't need to be too concerned even about what's happening around the trees but uh you know maybe i'll just take a little out of that it doesn't matter it's fine i'm not going crazy with da's hey just take it easy on these sliders all right don't have to go crazy unless that's your style less is more let's just a little 1920-ish there we go looking good there and uh okay i like I like my uh, like my situation there with the dehaze. Really helped the mountains in the sky quite a bit. I'm going to go back and uh, let's just we're at color temperature. Let's talk about color temperature here. 
as shot, came in at about 6,100 plus 18. What does auto give me? Quite a bit warmer. And I actually really do like that warmth. That's 7,500 plus 15. Loving it. Loving it across the board. Um, Going to leave it right there. But I want, I, want, I want some of the blue back in my sky. So I'm going to do another mask. I'm going to go up here, plus sign. Keep it positive. The positive sign, plus. And let's do a select sky. See how it does. Could be trouble. A lot of clouds, mountains. Easy, easy for it to get confused. Come on, little buddy. <gasps> Nailed it well. Nailed it well enough. Well enough. I could see I could do a little bit of a... Well, let's do it. Let's go with the negative. Let's not be negative. Let's use negative subtraction of a brush. There we go. No auto mask. I'm just going to come right up in here in this little area right here overlapping the mountains, and I'm going to take some of that out. Yep, fine, because it's not a big deal anyway. A little bit there. Oh, fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I am just going to blue this slightly so it's really not the end of the world. I see another booger in there. Fine, I'll get that. All right, so I'm going to come down to our color temperature. And let's just add... Oh, there we go. Mmm, I like it. I kind of like both those things. That's why it goes really near the reason for the 5 million. Like it, like it, like it. Now, there's something else I want to look at here. Maybe pull the exposure back down a little. There we go. That's sort of fun. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Fun. And what happens if I take some contrast out of the sky? It's a little contrasty for me. There we go. Maybe open up some shadows on those clouds a little bit. Pull the exposure back a little more. There we go. All right. Let's just see how we're doing here. Before, after. Yo, yeah. don't like it. I'm going to put some contrast back in there. That got a little too crazy. Not going to lie to you. I wouldn't do that. Not going to lie. Lion's bad, kids. Tell the truth. Truth is, I needed that. All right. So really, this is a pretty good image so far. I like where it's headed. Probably just call it quits right here if we wanted to. There's more we can do here, but I think that's a good, good start on this image. All right. Thanks.